Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Star Trek Picard dropped a trailer at Comic-Con that a lot of people are talking about, with Patrick Stewart returning as Jean-Luc Picard for the first time since Star Trek Nemesis. His Charles Xavier days are done, and he's back to the good stuff. This is a series that I'm super curious about, with not just references to the next generation, but like crossovers from Voyager, and we're now wading into the frontiers where my Trekkie expertise is limited. So, I have asked my good friend and huge Star Trek nerd, Marina Mastros, to break it down for us. Hi, Marina! Hi, Eric. Don't worry, I can explain why every Star Trek fan is losing their shit right now! Yeah. So you may have seen how Marina was awesome helping us break down the recent IT Chapter 2 trailer shot by shot, and you're gonna do the same with this Picard trailer, yeah? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna explain why all the new details and visual clues in this trailer you might have actually overlooked. Spoiler alert, in case I actually explain too much. Thank you, Marina. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, let's get started with the first clip from this trailer. Have you ever been a stranger to yourself? Many, many times. The trailer opens on Chateau Picard, his family vineyards in Labar, France. Picard's older brother Robert and nephew Rene tragically died in a fire, and now automated machines harvest the grapes and bottle the wine. Wine that Picard shared with the crew during Riker and Troy's wedding in Nemesis. And I was screaming at the reveal of Picard's old comm badge. Notice that it has these square-shaped wings, meaning it's the communicator that Picard wore in the movies. Moving on! Nearly two decades ago, Commander Data sacrificed his life for me. These past few years, I really tried to belong here. But it never truly felt like home. Okay, here Picard reminds us of how Commander Data sacrificed himself, referring to the ending of Nemesis, when Data destroyed Shinzon's Thaleron weapon and himself to save the Enterprise and everyone on it, beaming Picard to safety. I'm not crying, you're crying. There's an overhead shot of the android in segments, which is actually how I sleep, and Brent Spiner was asked about this shot. He said that he thinks this is android before the Data doppelganger in Nemesis. There's also an overhead shot of Picard walking in his vineyards with his new dog named Number One, which is very cute, a nod to his nickname for Commander Riker in Next Generation. In the Comic-Con panel, it was revealed that Jonathan Frakes will appear as Riker with Marina Sirtis as Counselor Troy in some of the episodes, which is my dream come true. Maybe we'll get a moment where Riker realizes he shares the name with the dog, like that joke in Indiana Jones. We're named the dog, Indiana. The dog? <laughs> you are named after the dog? <laughs> On to the next clip. Do you know who I am? Everything inside of me says that I'm safe with you. Admiral, I have encountered a woman. She came to me for help. In this section, Picard appears on holographic TV, suggesting he's a pretty famous dude, which he absolutely should be, and that's how he was found by, ba ba bum this mystery woman named Dodge. So, who is Dodge? Well, notice the scar on her forehead. That means she could be former Borg, but my thought is that she could be Picard's daughter with the Borg Queen from First Contact, with the Borg Queen bearing a child from the assimilated Picard, or Locutus, before he killed her. But there are a lot of theories floating around. She also could be Lal, Data's daughter, or, 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 okay, just stay with me here. She could actually be a John Connor type of character who will eventually go back and invent the Borg, which would make Picard the Terminator, and I am here for it. We also see Picard at Starfleet headquarters in San Francisco. Later in the trailer, we see that he arrives here via transporter pads, similar to the ones in the more recent Star Trek Beyond. Though, just as a reminder, that's the rebooted Kelvin timeline, not the Prime timeline, which Picard takes place in. Now, notice the new Starfleet uniforms. They keep the colors of the officer's track from Next Generation, thank God, yellow for engineering and security, blue for science and medicine, and red for command. These colors drape across the shoulders and the rest of the uniform is black and very classy. It now appears that holographic technology has become standard in this new era. That's right, TV shows have VFX budgets now. <laughs> Moving on. If she is who I think she is. She's in serious danger. So 
Sometimes I worry that you have forgotten who you are. Here, Picard watches as Dodge fights helmeted security forces that could be from Starfleet itself, since the falling henchman is beamed in midair, presumably to safety. Perhaps Starfleet is trying to apprehend Dodge, explaining why Picard has to go outside his former service for his new mission. Moving on to a shot of enemy ships, presumably new Romulan warbirds, approaching an unknown planet. Then, a very interesting shot of some kind of medical procedure on a Borg body. Notice the Romulans are wearing masks. This shows how they're taking all precautions to prevent an outbreak and assimilation into the Borg collective. And before I move on, there's a shot of this banner for Captain Picard Day, which they used to celebrate on the USS Enterprise, which always made Picard uneasy. This could be a flashback to happier times, or it could be a hint at his new crew, which could be the now grown children from his old ship, which be really funny because he hated those kids at the time. Next clip! We do not. You can't do it alone. You need help. You need protection. You need a crew. Be the captain they remember. Here we see Romulans are keeping Borg prisoners, and there's a sign that reads, this facility has gone 5,843 days without an assimilation. It's kind of nuts that this is the sign they would have, as opposed to just like writing the number on a wall and everyone knowing what it means. But then again, you can't blame them for taking assimilation so seriously because resistance is futile. I'll also point out that 5,843 days is just over 16 years, which isn't that far from the release of Star Trek Nemesis. And then we meet the new cast. Yes, I am here for it. There's Chris Rio Santiago Cabrera, a skilled thief and pilot of Picard's new ship. Allison Pill plays Dr. Agnes Girardi, a researcher. There's also Michelle Hurd as Rafi Massacre, a former Starfleet intelligence officer with ties to Picard who struggles with substance abuse. Evan Evagora plays Elnor, a young long-haired Romulan, fiercely loyal to Picard as everyone should be, and an expert in melee combat. Essentially, Picard is gonna be a captain again, and I'm shitting my pants! Move on! She truly is. She's the end of all. She's the destroyer. In this section, we meet another new cast member, Harry Treadaway, playing Narek, saying she has no idea what she truly is. On the far right of the frame, there's a red light beaming through a window with what looks like a Romulan symbol, suggesting that it could be a Romulan ship. Maybe they stole it, maybe they didn't. We don't know. Another character growls, she's the end of it all, she's the destroyer. Again, we could be looking at a Borg-human hybrid or that inventor or founder theory of the Borg. Dodge sits on a bed beside a stuffed animal that kind of reminds me of a Tribble. It looks like one of of the upcoming Star Trek shorts will bring back Tribbles. And then we get an awesome shot of the Borg cube. Okay, I was screaming, I was screaming, but notice how it's damaged. Plates are missing from its hull, it appears to be hollowed out, and the ship lights are blue and not green. And Romulan ships are surrounding it, suggesting maybe the Romulans captured it, stripped its technology, and are experimenting with it to create cybernetically enhanced hybrids. We know that Jonathan Del Arco will return as Hugh the Borg that Picard and the Enterprise crew freed from the Collective, and that his story will pick up where it left off in Next Generation episode Descent Part 2, leading a group of freed Borg drones. On to the next clip! What the hell are you doing out here, Picard? Saving the galaxy. Engage. Hot damn! We got seven of nine, baby! Jerry Ryan is back with a crossover from Star Trek Voyager, which is just everything I want in life. Her character was a former assimilated Borg, with her original name being Annika Hansen, so presumably she'll have a pretty major role to play in this Borg-centric story. And in a rapid-fire montage, there's a quick shot of a Borg corpse. I'm wondering if this could actually be Hugh, and Del Arco's continued role in this new series will be in this gooey form. And that brings us to Picard saying, engage, and so many parts of me just made it so. On to the final clip of the trailer. <laughs> I don't want the game to end. I can see that, Captain. Yes, bitch, Data is back! Though, again, it's not totally clear if this is B4 or Data here, or if B4 has become Data by importing his memory engrams. They're playing poker in what looks like a kind of a void, so they actually could be on a holodeck. And of course, Picard is drinking tea, Earl Grey, piping hot! They speak the words that are on 
all of our minds. None of us want this game to end. And thankfully, with the return of Brent Spiner as Data, as well as the appearances of Riker, Troy, Hugh, and Seven of Nine, the game never has to end! Jean-Luc Picard is gonna live forever because Patrick Stewart is gonna live forever. Mm, yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna hyperventilate until 2020. What are you most looking forward to with this new Picard series? Comment down below with your thoughts and subscribe to new rock stars with more breakdowns of all the stuff you love. I'm Marina Mastros. Thanks for watching. Is this right? Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Know. Yeah. <laughs>